Hola, hola, G2. Welcome to this small group video. My name is Adoniel, and let me tell you a little bit more about myself. So I grew up in a big family with five siblings, and I'm the second one. And Saturdays in the house is general cleaning day. The philosophy in the house was everyone lives there, so everyone is responsible for the house. So Abby, the older, Ama, the next one after me, Annie, the one after him and me, knew that we needed to contribute to the house cleaning. Puchis, the youngest, well, he was only stay because he was too little to help, so he will be watching movies. So one Saturday, my parents went on a weekend off. My dad took my mom on a romantic morning date and my mom left some instructions for the house. <laughs> Abby was in charge of hoovering. I needed to mop. Ama was going to wipe upstairs and Annie was on the downstairs floor. But before starting to clean, we had breakfast and we watched movie together. It was a lovely time. <laughs> Once we finished breakfast, Abby began to clean the table, Hama cleaned the kitchen, and, and Ami, Annie helped with the dishes. On, on that day, I was really not in the mood, and I just wanted to stay watching another movie with Butchies. So my other siblings, they started their duties. But to be fair, I just needed to, do, to mop, so that's at the end of their tasks. So staying with Butchies was a better option. The day flew by, and Abby not only hoovered, but also cleaned the toilets. Ama saw that the grass needed a trim, so he worked outside, and Anna, Annie wiped downstairs and all of her toys. While I saw them doing all of that, I knew like, oh man, my mom, she would be sad if I don't mop the floor. But the movies were so good, I knew that helping in the house was going to bless everyone who lived there, but I just couldn't be bothered to clean on that day. <laughs> so when my parents returned from, from the dates, they realized that all the tasks in the house were done except for mine. I, I didn't mop at all. And I was in trouble on that day really. So I went to bed very, very late because I needed to clean. And also I was responsible for the next week's cleaning. <laughs> so before we carry on, I want to throw some questions to interact with your small group. So they are going to see, you're going to see them in on the screen. So the first one is, when was the last time you follow instruction? And was, was, what was the outcome of doing it? When there is work to be done, do you work better with a deadline or rather organize things on your own time? So pause the video and see you in a bit. Last week with Jamie, we studied the Olivet Discourse when Jesus' disciples asked him, when will the temple be destroyed and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of age? Today's passage continues the Olivet Discourse. Think about it like the second part. So pause the video and read in your groups Matthew 25, 14 to 30. Please select three different translations and someone to read each out loud slowly. In the passage, you will find three different servants. So while someone reads slowly, Close your eyes and imagine that you are the first servant for the first translation, the second one for the second translation, and the third one for the third one. As we remember, 
were in the last days of Jesus before being crucified. The disciples asked Jesus about the end of times. Jesus answered with signs and wonders to predict when he will come again in glory and his kingdom will have no end. Today's parable follows the parable of the ten virgins, which we looked out in our last Sunday gathering. And what I like from these parables is that Jesus stops talking about signs and highlights the attitude we should approach every single day we live. In Matthew 25, the author registered the last three parables Jesus taught to his disciples before being crucified. So these are the last three. Let's try to grasp every single verse. Matthew 25, 14, it says, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. This is the first point for today. God is calling you. <laughs> Something that has encouraged and boosted my faith is to experience how relational God is. It says the kingdom of heaven will be like a man who called his servants. God's biggest desire is to develop an intimate relationship with us, a friendship we can recognize every time he calls. The God I know is always there to get me closer to him. Have you ever experienced that you message someone and and other person and that and the other person doesn't reply maybe you just sent a message to verify that things are okay but still no answer sometimes i feel that i am that person with him and he's calling waiting for me to reply to respond and be with him god wants to remain closer to us and the bible contains examples of god calling people for example, Genesis 3.9 says, But the Lord called the man. Then we see God calling Cain, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Basically, in the Bible, we, have, we find many examples of people called by God who reply to the call. God calls you and invites you to be part of his glory. But it's up to you to respond. The second part of the same verse says, will be like a man who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Let's consider this, a man that gives the servant all of his wealth. It was his initiative. They didn't ask for it, nor did they work for it or deserve it. This man's idea was to entitle his servants to steward everything he had. Everything that we have comes from God. Your skills, talent, resources, and time. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. This takes, takes us to our second point, and is God gives you of his glory. The bags of gold have many meanings. It doesn't mean that we were born and God gave us a big bag of gold because if that happened, well, <laughs> I think I need to have a conversation with my parents about that, that bag. <laughs> but for some, the bag of gold is love, generosity or time or skills, the people around you or joy or peace or dreams. God is a natural creator and giver. Every good and perfect gift we have comes from him. And like the man that was going on a journey and trusted his will, God has entrusted you with gifts and empowers you to use them for his glory. Have you ever found in situations where you forget that all you have comes from God? Verse 15. To one he gave five bags of gold, 
to other one two backs and to another one one back each according to his ability and then he sent went off his journey and i don't want us to focus on the phrase each according to his ability because what does that mean does it mean that god thinks we are incapable or unqualified or not good enough to receive more or fewer bags of gold no he does not play favorites but from each accordingly to his ability merely suggests that we can develop and live as best as possible with what we have given so third one look after your bags of gold when we focus on our things instead of comparing ourselves with others we can enjoy what we have we sometimes spend our time asking someone why someone has more than me why can that housemate ask for so many takes away regularly or why that person seems happier than me and my question is does it matter if i'm aware that everything i have comes from god isn't it that the, isn't the best gift possible either five three or two everything comes from his glory and now the servant didn't ask the master why you only gave me five bucks or three they didn't ask any questions to the master because they focused on putting the bags of golf to work and i want to be very clear on this because this parable doesn't talk about being successful it's not about how many things you achieve in life this parable is about god empowering us to put our talents to work for his glory 1 peter 4 10 to 11 says each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of god's grace in its various form if anyone speaks they should do so as one who speaks the very word of god if anyone serves they should do so with the strength god provides so that in all things god may be praised through jesus christ to him be the glory and the power forever and ever amen and a couple of weeks ago i i was really encouraged by something that my girlfriend's mom said uh, now i i i know and i believe that god has blessed me with the gift of joy and it's not for me it's 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 to glorify him so the other day beth was chatting with her mom and 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 the mexican came out on the conversation and she said i just really like being around Ado. he makes me feel happier so i know that the joy in me can be contagious and i can multiply it and i decide to put it to work so that more people can be blessed or at least that what they said <laughs> during my masters also i i i encourage some house course mates to use google calendar to help them to increase their productivity and have a better time management and two sundays ago we explore how to give abundantly in money boundaries hospitality and time how would your life change if everything that you do you do it for the glory of god the man with five bucks put his money to work and gained five more. The one with three also put the money to work and won another three. Now imagine the joy and satisfaction of the first servant when the masters came back and, and handed off the earnings and, and the master said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And this is the God I preach. God celebrates when you look after your bags of gold. And Jesus said, 
The one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When we remain faithful to God's call for his glory, he invites us to share his happiness. And, and something that I really want to highlight is the answer to the second, to, to the first and second servants, for, for, because they are the same. Regardless of the bags of gold they delivered, because God does not look into result, but the Lord looks on the heart. God celebrates when we work with our bags of gold to glorify Him. We are called to glorify God. But there is another servant we haven't talked about. But he is the one that was afraid of the master, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. When I read about the third, third servant, it surprised me that he decided to live a life disconnected from the master's call, as if he didn't care that the masters will come back and, and did not live for the glory of the master. So do not be afraid of using the glory that is in you. The parable is an invitation to enjoy the journey of our lives without fear, knowing that through Christ we can do all things because he gives us strength and invites us to live a life of in freedom, knowing that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Jesus invites us to live for God's glory, living a life ready for when he comes again in glory. Now, as we finish, we have a group activity followed by our prayer and some questions. So, as a group, why don't we tell each other what you see in each other? Yeah. <laughs> What's, what are the each other's bags of gold? And pray and give thanks God for the bags of gold, gold that he has given you.